This is my hydrangea mosaic table topped with china and broken dish pieces. Uh, I am a beginner. This is only my second project. I used an old metal table that had an insert and the insert was warped. So I removed the insert, put some new paint on the table. You should not mosaic on a surface that's flexible or that expands and contracts like this, um, this thin metal table. So I used cement backer board like you use in a, uh, in a bathroom. Um, it was probably overkill, but I may use the table outside. So I wanted to be sure that it was uh, strong and sturdy. You could also use uh, MDF, but you would need to prime it first. So I did not glue my pieces directly to the cement backer board. I wanted to follow a pattern. So I went on the internet and I found some images of hydrangeas that I liked. I cut a piece of freezer paper the same size as the table cover and I placed those images on the paper um, just as I was going to want them on the table. My images are pink but I'm going to do blue flowers instead. And then um, on top of my images I put a piece of plastic wrap and then on top of that I uh, put a layer of netting and I know it's not the right netting but that's what I had and it worked so um, this way the tiles didn't gl get glued to the paper they got glued to the netting and that did not stick to the plastic wrap next I screwed the cement backer board to the bottom of the table using screws and some glue be sure that the screws do not come up through the cement backer board because they can interfere with the tile. So I'm starting my project. I have my table with my cement backer board screwed to the table. And then on top of that, I have my white paper pattern. Then I have a layer of plastic wrap. And then I have a layer of red netting, which you can't see in the video very good. So what I'm doing is I'm gluing the tiles to that netting. And when I'm done, I will disassemble these layers, cover the cement board with thin set, and place the netting and all the tiles glued to it onto that thin set. So the reason I had to use this method is my tiles or my dish pieces are different thicknesses and since it's a table I wanted the top to be flat so that's why I had to do it this way. Uh, for the pieces I used um, platters, vases, mugs, some I had, some I purchased. I noticed when I was looking at images of hydrangeas, they usually included three different tones. So before I started, I chose three different tones of blue to use in the hydrangeas. And I basically just got the dishes and I put them together on the table to see which colors worked well together. And I did the same thing for the leaves. I wanted to use three or four different tones of green for the leaves. So I put the dishes together and made sure that the tones sort of played well together and I also decided not to use any bright whites in it. I used mostly off whites and creams and sometimes just putting the dishes together didn't show me enough so I would just break them. I would just break break a few little pieces off of it and put those small pieces together to try to see if they work together because for me they looked good when the dishes were piled together but then when you broke them into smaller pieces they didn't really go together so it was some trial and error and I did try to use a, um, a white butterfly and that's when I knew that I wasn't going to be using any white dishes because it, um, it sort of didn't go with all of the, the creams and the off-whites. 
I did have to remove some pieces that I didn't like here and there. No big deal. They just, sometimes it tore the netting, but, you know, trial and error. Um, I didn't let, tried not to let the, the details hold me back. I tried to just jump in. Uh, my little butterflies came out really good. I used beads for their body and for their antenna. And I didn't like how the hydrangeas looked like they had uh, too much light pieces across the top. So I did end up pulling off a few of those and mixing in more colors uh, so that they didn't look sort of snow-capped. My favorite was using the patterned dishes mixed in with the solid colors. I think it gives it less of a commercial look. I used regular thin set um, from Home Depot. I'm not sure what brand it was, and I followed the instructions as best I could and spread it onto the cement board, and I did it as, as even as I could. It didn't come out perfectly. And then my daughter helped me lift the netting and place it onto the thin set. And I replaced some tiles. And then I used a 2x4 just to press it in um, to the thin set to make the top flat. And that made up the difference for the different thicknesses of tile. My thin set was very thick. So I let it dry for about a week before I did the grouting. And um, when I did the grouting, there was a, um, you know, a ledge uh, around the sides. And so I just sort of smoothed that out and rounded it and um, pressed the grout in. Um, the problem with using that netting is there were sort of some dimples uh, it made some dimples in the um, in the thin set, which sort of came up kind of high, but I just grouted over it. And um, after doing the first wiping of the grout, um, I just followed the instructions and waited a, a little bit of time and then came back and wiped each tile individually with a dry, soft t-shirt, which I kind of like. So I really enjoyed, you know, shining up each little tile. The grout was also pretty thick, so I've let that dry a few weeks, and I'm going to put some grout sealer on it. And I hate to use it outside because it's so pretty, so I may use it inside until it, you know, it loses its, um, its newness, and then I'll put it outside, but... Um, it's really pretty and it doesn't need to last a hundred years. It just needs to, you know, just need to get some use out of it. And, um, so I'm, I'm ready to start a new project. So if you're thinking about doing some, some mosaics, just jump right in and maybe just use some supplies that you already have on hand. Um, don't let the, the little details stop you. So I really had a good time. So thanks for watching.